Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm here with Emil. How are you doing, Emil? Well, thanks. How are you? Good, man. Uh, today we're speaking about perseverance. Yeah. Um, and I think we have been preparing our listeners for perseverance because yeah. they are actually staying with us for 30 minutes listening to the whole podcast. Yeah. So I guess if you if you could actually do something like this, um, yeah, you, you're getting trained on it. Yeah, step one's already there. It's <laughs> step already <one>. done. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever go through something pretty tough and um, just remind yourself, you got to deal with us for 30 minutes a week. So that that's pretty great. Um, on a serious note, mm-hmm. perseverance is something very challenging. Yeah. Something that as Christians, we're very uncomfortable with. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say about this? Well, I think we've done similar topics like um, discipline because a lot of things do overlap. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot of things that don't. Um, yeah. So as long as somebody is disciplined and uh, is, um, you know, hopeful, not in their own strength and in their own um, power, but in the Holy Spirit. Yep. um, I think there is, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it's definitely going to be a weight off our shoulders. Cool, cool. We're not in this alone. Yeah. And perseverance, I think it's it's not one of those things that uh, you could solve with an answer. Mm-mm. It's it's a journey. Yeah. It's an action. It's just, yeah. you just got to do it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or not do it, depending on what you're perceiving. I think that's one of the difficult parts mm. for perseverance is that you actually have to go through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it does make it difficult for a lot of us, yeah. es- especially when we feel like, we need it to be solved now, right? Because you're like to God, now is the time, God, you need to intervene. And we obviously, we speak about God's timing and and other stuff like that. But reality is not as easy as words. Yes. Because you hear it like you, and you know, when you're in a good place, you say it as well. But when you step back, take a step back and actually like evaluate what it actually means to be like, or just be patient. It's tough. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, I can share a verse with you, mm-hmm, sure. um, and that's literally right in the beginning of James. Mm-hmm. So James chapter one, I'm having a bit of difficulties with my internet. Um, I don't think it's internet, but I'll, I'll get to read that for you. And sure. it starts with verse two. Uh, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, mm-hmm. knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Amen. So it, it, James is actually encouraging the believers to have the attitude of joy. Yeah. To be joyful while you're persevering, while you're waiting. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. For, for starters, it's, it's a good thing because we believe in a faithful God. We believe that God rewards. Yes. And God is gracious. So therefore, when we're waiting, we're not waiting with that hope. Of course. We're waiting with hope and we are also waiting with confidence. Yeah. I think that's important for us. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I, I see it as like perseverance is having that hope that we're going to get out of this darkness. Mm-hmm. We like we're in a part where whether it's a part in our life or what or a relationship, whatever it is, there's a there's a time where it's like it feels like you're surrounded by darkness and you're just hoping for a light and Jesus is that light. So yeah. as long as we have that light, we can hold on. But the moment there is no hope, the moment is like the, the length of time is undetermined. Hmm. Then, and, and, and there's no kind of light. People just crumble. And, and there was actually, um, I know it's slightly off topic, but there was actually an experiment where they did with mice, where they would put a mouse in a bucket of water and soap. Okay. And they'd leave him there and eventually the mouse would give up after like five minutes or so and it would just, you know, fall to the bottom. All right. But then they did a different one, like with a different mouse where they would pick him up after three minutes and take him away and then leave the other mouse there. And the other mouse lasted 30 minutes because it had the hope that he could get picked up as well, just like oh. the mouse next to him. And I, I'm just yes. like paraphrasing, but it was... Like, I don't know the exact length of times and everything, but that was like hope 
is such a driving factor in your perseverance. If cool. you have no hope, you cannot persevere. It's hard. It's it's impossible. So in a human level, because as you're saying it, I'm thinking, okay, this is why testimonies are a powerful thing mm-hmm. for Christians, Absolutely. right? When someone is going through something and you come along and say, hey, man, I've been in your situation. Yeah. I've been in your shoes. Guess what? God has delivered me from yeah. it. There's hope. There's hope. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Well, we're not mice. We, we're yeah. more important than mice Absolutely. to God. Uh, but it is definitely a, a very important lesson to learn. It's applicable to us. We yeah. can apply the same logic to our life and our patience and our perseverance. When there's hope, there's more. Mm. Like, you know, there's there's something that you want to fight for. But when there's nothing, there's no hope to fight for, why are you fighting? True, true. Yeah, So, but we know that there's hope. Our hope is in Christ, so we should keep fighting. Yeah, I, I think that's why, as Paul said, that... <laughs> I'm living in a dying body, but I I am spiritually being renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are persevering in our faith. We're persevering in our walk with Christ is because we know that the moment we close our eyes here, we're going to be in heaven with the Lord. Yeah, I think that's very important. Some people feel like they come to a point in their life where they're like, I don't feel like God is working in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going through a lot of problems. I'm praying, but it feels like I'm speaking to no one. Yeah. Okay. I feel so empty, so dry. I'm begging for something to happen. Nothing is happening. Feels like God hid his face from us. That's what it is. Mm. What would you encourage someone to do in that in, in that time? God is listening. God does hear our prayers. God knows. Um, what we're going through through and um, the pains that we are currently feeling and everything like that. Sometimes we're put in those positions. And look, the, sometimes the, the, I don't know the answer. Sometimes it's not that clear cut. But mm-hmm. most of the times it's to build our perseverance. It's to build our character. It's to build our level of patience. Maybe it's to put, it's to prepare us for what's to come. Maybe he needs us ready and experience for something greater maybe okay look some it's not always the same case and every case is different but on a grander scale i i don't know what god's will is i i just have to have hope in in him and that that he is faithful because we know that he's faithful and that he is good because we know that he is good um so we just have to have faith in him it's all about faith and the hope being in christ and not in people and things and and even our own power and our own perseverance, sometimes it's lacking. More often than not, it's lacking. And sometimes we, he, he has to kind of supplement that perseverance when we ask for it. You know, we say, God, I'm running out of patience. I'm running out of perseverance. I'm only a man. I can only, I'm only a woman. I can only handle so much. Mm. I need your help. You know, I'm running on empty right now. Like, it's like a, my fuel is gone. I've used it all up. And now there's more things. It's not, it hasn't gone better. You know, when you're down, the devil wants to kick you, you know, type of thing. And it feels like it's getting worse. And that light at the end of the tunnel seems like it's getting further and further away. So I need your help. Mm. And sometimes we just cry out and then it seems like there's no answer and it's tough. And I've been there. I'm sure you have too. Mm. It's frustrating. It's it's not great. And by the end of the day, as tough as it is, we still have to stand strong and and hope in Christ and just yeah. have our trust and faith in him and not in in our own strength i i like the point that you're making here um that god's not only working on the situation but he's also working on in the you future things. yeah um i want to share mm. romans 5 3 to 5 sure he's saying and not only that but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance yep. and perseverance character and character hope. Yeah. So through that perseverance, God is building a stronger Christian in you, mm-hmm. a Christian that would be facing future tribulations with more ease. 100%. Saying, hey, I've been here. I've done that before. 100%. Uh, my hope is in God. He's always rescued me 
nothing is going to change. And the only reason why nothing is going to change is because God himself does not change. is the same mm-hmm. yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And this is what he says in verse 5. I didn't uh, share verse 5. Saying, now hope does not disappoint. Which is what we're actually talking about. Yeah. Because the love of God has, be, has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. So it is such a beautiful passage. It is. That we can we can uh, get encouraged by. This actually reminds me of a friend um, that was going through a very tough time. Mm. And um, God guided me to this passage. I said, my friend, you're on a, on a journey. You've gone through a tribulation. You're persevering. Yeah. And God is building your character. Yeah. Once God builds your character... Your foundation, the hope that you have will be placed in God. Mm -hmm. And that hope does not disappoint. I remember his reaction. His reaction is like, I never thought about it that way. I said, neither have I. It's just kind of came into my heart to share with you uh, what God wants to share for you personally. Because like, I know that some people always wait on some sort of voice in the wind or some thunderous voice coming from the skies for God to answer them or a sign or whatever it is but sometimes it's it's like that that's how God talks to us it's through people through you know through using people and the Holy Spirit is in in us so yeah the Holy Spirit who's in me can through me speak things to you that you wanted to know and you needed to know you know it's not me it's it's coming from the Holy Spirit it's something that I didn't even think about it's something that the Holy Spirit that God put in my heart to help you. Yeah. And that's Amen. God answering your prayer by using me, by using a, a TV um, minister, by using the pastor at the church that's preaching the message. That's that's why it's good for us to surround ourselves with Christians because at times where we are going through a journey that's perilous and tough and hard, we have our brothers and sisters to rely on. That's why I stress it like, I cannot stress it more than enough. It's it's so important to have fellowship with Christians. Mm. Because more often than not, our perseverance, our strength is lacking, our willpower is lacking, our discipline is lacking. That's why sometimes we kind of lean on others. And not in a way where it's troublesome because mo- like true Christians want to help each other. They love each like they love the other person. Why wouldn't they want to help them? And of course they know that if tables were turned they would do the same for them like if yeah. if it was the other way around the same thing would be done for them and and that's what it is it's we are a community and we're all connected by the holy spirit you know that's he kind of is in all of us that's what connects us what kind of brings us closer so we that all being in one body as yeah, well exactly yeah. we, we're we're one so let's we help each other and we guide each other we help we help each other when we fall but when when you're when you're not with anyone, when you're just by yourself, <laughs> you're setting up yourself for full failure. Like I'm sorry to say, but that's what it is. If you don't, you know, go to church and you don't surround yourself with Christians, you don't know any Christians. You just by yourself. You're doing everything on your own. Oh, I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll make it. Maybe today. But what about tomorrow or the day after and the day after that? You're gonna get tired eventually. We get tired and look, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying you're making it hard on yourself for no reason. That's why I surround yourself with, with Christians, fellow Christians and, and rely on people. Just open yourself up to them and, and also do the same for them. Cause when you, when you've built your character up, when you are now, you know, steadfast in your faith and your hope is 100% in Christ and you're, 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 you're good where you are and you see someone going through something that was similar to what you went through, you know how to help them. Mm. You can return the favor. And that's what it is. And that's, that's what I see in the church. Yeah. That's a really good point. <clears throat> it's having people take that journey with you. Yeah. They obviously are not in the same situation no. because that's what you're dealing with personally, but having people that are with you every step of the way Something that's a bit discouraging is that 
um, we solve everything when people share with us a situation. The way we try and solve it is I'll pray about it. Instead of doing something very practical yeah. with your brother or your sister, those who are really struggling with it. Something that, as you were talking, it really reminded me of Galatians 6. Mm. I'm sharing a bit too many verses, but that's what God has in my heart. Verse 1 and 2, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. But I like the second one as well, verse 2, Bear one another's burden. Wow. That that's the idea of taking that journey with someone. Yeah. Say, hey, I'm here to carry that load with you. Yeah. And so fulfill the law of Christ. How crazy is that wow. to say the law of Christ is to bear uh, bear each other's burdens? Yeah. That's amazing. It lightens the load. That way, we both we're not struggling neither of us. Because if I'm carrying two heavy loads, I'm struggling. But if you carry on with me, we're both okay. Yeah, we can yeah. do it. And it's, we can make it. We can, we can cross make the it. line. That's right. Yeah. We both will make it. Whereas if you're just like, no, I don't want to carry anything, but I'm dying here. Well, that's not my problem. It's, that's very how can true. You, how can you say that you love Christ when you hate me? And obviously you, you, you hate your brother if you don't want to help them. Yeah. You don't care for them. Oh, like James, you know how was, you've got a... You've got a struggling brother and all you say is, I'll oh, pray for you. Be, be blessed and, you know, be on your way. Your faith is dead. Yeah, your faith is dead. That's yeah. why James is saying, if a person is struggling, you got to show the fruit of your faith. Now, we, we believe that for God, all he requires is our faith. Of course. That's how we are saved, is to have our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the people around us, our faith is not enough for them mm. because unlike God who's sitting on his throne in need of nothing, our brothers and sisters are in need. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's not the same situation as we have that relationship between us and God. Yet saying that Jesus takes it very personally because mm. on judgment day in Matthew yeah. 25, He's saying, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was in prison, you didn't come visit me. And they said, Jesus? Like, we've never seen you hungry. He's talking about his people. Yeah, he says, if you haven't done it to one of these ones, then you haven't done it to me. So this whole idea is that as Christians, we do live a bit of an indiv individualistic lifestyle, right? Each one is to their own. Mm. Your problem is yours. My problem is mine. I would feel sorry for you if you're going through something tough, but that's as far as I'm going to go with it. Or if I do feel a bit spiritual today, I might even mention you in my prayer. But we don't have that deep connections as the Bible tells us to have that connection yeah. of, of the body, right? If my arm is hurting me, yeah. my other arm is not going to be like, well, thank God it's not my, that's, it's not me. No, yeah. we attend to the pain, making sure the whole body is doing well. And I, I, from my own experience, what I've witnessed is those people that are like this, that say, oh, I'll pray for you and genuinely do not care about one another because they don't have love for their brothers and sisters, really. They say the words, but the words are empty. They say that they believe in Christ, but do they really? If they truly believed and loved him, they would follow his commandments. They would they would do what he wants them to do. They don't. They love themselves. Hmm. So they were never of Christ. They're liars. That's how I see it. Because their fruits are dead. There's no fruits. Hmm. You judge them by their fruits. There's no fruits. So yeah. how, can they, how can I call them Christians? But... Here's the thing. They say the words. They 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 put their hands up and they sing and they claim to be Christian. But I don't see any fruits. And it's not just a one time thing. Like you know, everyone goes through, yeah, you know, phases in their life where they're struggling. No, it's just that's who they are. That's they love themselves. And look, I don't like. Usually, I'm like, I just stay away from those people. I pray for those people. I try to t talk to them, but if they don't want to listen, that's their choice. I don't, I don't condemn those people. I don't do anything like that. But I have to judge those people based on their actions, based on their fruits. That's all I have to judge them on. And there are none. And the worst part is these people corrupt good people. 
the people that are persevering and doing so much for these people, and in turn, they instead of getting a thank you, they get a slap, they get corrupted, and now they don't want to help anyone because they've been hurt before. They see that people are treating their kindness as weakness. Yeah. True. And then they're like, I don't want to help anyone anymore. And it becomes like, it's like you fed a dog and then bit the hand that fed him. I'm not going to feed any more dogs. Yeah. You know, not even the crumbs that fall off my table. Mm -hmm. No, no, thank you. Yeah, I think on that note, I would encourage people to continue to persevere. 100%. Um, but at, it's hard. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. hard. Serve the Lord. And even Jesus says in Luke 17 that um, when the servant does their job, they say we're unprofitable servants. Mm -hmm. We're only doing our job. I would encourage you that your reward is in heaven and God sees what yeah. you do in secret. It's Nothing true. is passed by God's eyes. Everything is seen by him. He will reward everyone according to their deeds. Um, there are people that might be discouraging you to say, why are you pursuing your faith? Um, stop persevering. Or why yeah. are you pre uh, persevering in regards to pursuing to help others or serving others? Yeah, I wouldn't encourage you to listen to them because they're not sharing what the Bible is teaching you to do. That's right. The Bible is telling you to do is to continue to serve others, is to continue to persevere, is to continue to have hope That's right. in God. And you know what? And to love those people as well. Yeah, love it's, them. It's hard, but because like I've seen those people that struggle with that and I keep telling them like, look, don't let those people corrupt who you are. Don't let those people change you. You know, despite what, what they think, don't let it change you. Because then they win. And when I say they, I mean who's actually behind them and using them. You know? Because this is a war. A war is not with people. You know, they're clearly, they're, they're <laughs> ignorant of who they're being used by. Mm. They genuinely think they're of Christ. They're not. They're being used by the enemy. Our fight is not with them. They're human beings. Jesus died for them. He loves them. Yeah, they can change. They're not so corrupted that that's it. You know, they're irredeemable. No, otherwise we'd all be going to hell. Jesus died for them. Jesus loves them. Love them. Fight for them. They they fighting you. Fight for them because the one behind them wants you to not love them. The one that's yeah. the one that's making them do the horrible things to people wants you to quit and say I give up. I don't I don't care about these people anymore. That's what he wants. He wins. Yeah. A good example on that actually is the crucifixion. Mm. Right? They said, hey, if you're the son of God, come down. Yeah. And Jesus says, well, he'll be thinking that if I come down, I'm, I'm doing this for you. Right? If I actually come down, there's no salvation for you. That's right. So I am persevering. I did pick up the cross. I am fulfilling the calling of my father in my life. And I am going to accomplish that. I think one of the most powerful moments in your life and and I'm not being in, like one of this influencers sharing trying to share an in, mm. influential uh, quote no but actually one of the most powerful times in your life is in those really tough seasons in your life yeah you you come out of it you experience God's grace more you experience God's presence more yeah. you get to fall in love with God you develop a deeper relationship with God it, it, it's just that what the Bible says to taste and see how good the Lord is it's, it's you you start to have that depth in the Lord that you recognize what you have gone through has always had a purpose. Yeah. It's developed you and made you stronger, closer to the Lord. But at the same time, God was showing you that he himself is sufficient. I believe that's so important because a lot of times when we go through tough things, God is at the back seat and we take the front seat and we're trying to damage control. We're trying to steer our lives around and we have no idea what we're we doing. We just have to times. be still sometimes. Sometimes be still and know he that is good. he is good. And by being still is staying in the back seat and let God just steer your life. Yeah. Let him be in control. It's very difficult. 
I know what we're saying right now and you could be going through something so tough and you might be like these guys have no idea what I'm going through these guys just know how to share some biblical examples they might share a bit of their experience but they have no idea what I'm going through maybe we don't know what you're going through but guess who does God God his spirit lives in you he's the one that's going to guide you out of this you look at the life of Paul He's been um, persecuted. He's been kicked out of cities. He's been rejected by his own people. He's been almost dead many times. But guess what? He persevered. He continued to run the race. And he did say it. He says, I run the race to win it. I run the race to finish it. We're not participating in this race. Those who are not planning to persevere, they're just participating. I'll just run for a bit. When I'm feeling tired, I'm going to stop. Paul has a different mindset. He says, I've started this race and I'm planning to finish it because I have the Lord God on my side and he's going to help me get through it. Now, you might feel, sorry to cut you off. Now, you might feel like I started the race um somewhere in the forest i have no idea where i am you're in a detour at the moment god is going to take you back just ask god god could you bring my life back together and bring me back on track where i need to be not where i want to be where you need to you need me to be that's something very important yeah cool um man this went very quick yeah last words of encourage encouragement do you have anything to say man yeah um when it feels like all hope is lost and you feel like you want to give up and just curl up into a ball and cower just know that jesus is there he hasn't forgotten you he sees you he hears you he knows you he loves you he has a plan for you don't give up keep fighting stand back up again and if you're not, if you don't know any any brothers and sisters in Christ, I highly recommend you find some and have someone to lean on. It's hard to do this alone. But regardless, if you're not in a situation where you can rely on people, just know that Christ is there. And He knows you. He knows your pain. He knows what you're going through. Just rely on Him. And, and uh, trust me, it will end. It, it might take some time. It might not be instant it might be but it might not be but just know there is a light at the end of the tunnel it does end it does end yeah my final encouragement to you guys is the lord is our shepherd and we we shall not be in need or in one of anything he is he himself is sufficient. satisfying sufficient for us and he will lead us and we, we will be able to experience those green pastures. Those are there and God is yeah. has promised them and he is faithful to deliver his promises. So I would encourage you not to hold, n- not to allow your emotions to dictate whether you should continue the race or not. Right. Not to allow other people's opinions to dictate whether you should continue or not. Uh, a very good example of that is Job's wife. She says, why don't you just mm. curse the Lord and die? He could have just done that and the story would have ended. But no, yeah. Job persevered and God restored him. God restored him. He went through terrible time. He lost his children, his possessions. His body was full of pain. He was in pain. Yet God restored him and God bless him even more so i would encourage you just continue being with the lord as he is faithful to you you be faithful to him believe in his words so thank you for enjoying this um episode with us we will see you next time god bless take Take care see ya